A rogue CIA misled the White House, Congress, and the American people. That's the conclusion of the Senate Intelligence Committee's report on the CIA's detention and interrogation program after September 11th. The executive summary was called from 6,700 pages of documents, most of which are still classified. Among the takeaways, the torture was more brutal and widespread than authorized. There was little oversight. Interrogators who tried to stop it were overruled. It did not help find Osama bin Laden, and it did not work. Joining us is Fairleigh Dickinson Associate Professor of Political Science, John Scheman, author of Interrogational Torture, or How Good Guys Get Bad Information with Ugly Methods. Your title tells us where you stand on this. Thank you. All right. It tells, me, it tells you what my, the results of my research were. Right. What surprised you the most about this report? Um, I, I suppose that some of the the abuses that I thought might have happened actually did happen. So I was surprised. I knew, I suspected that there would, when it finally came out, we would learn about uh, new sorts of, uh, of abuses, dragging detainees through walls and so forth, uh, out, around through corridors. I was surprised that they didn't get as much information, even less information than I anticipated. Is information obtained from torture reliable, according to your research? No, it's not reliable. Uh, and the reason is, uh, the, partly the problem is the idea of false confessions. That anybody, when you're, if you've ever been to a dentist's office, you know that people will say anything to, to avoid torture. But what's less known, actually, is that often people will not provide information at all despite the most horrific torture. And we've seen that throughout history, and we see it in this program. Those who say the report should not be le released at all are concerned about national security, about jeopardizing the lives of operatives on the ground. Are all those concerns legitimate? It's always legitimate to be concerned uh, about blowback and, and, and American lives being, being jeopardized. Uh, I'd argue that, in fact, uh, American lives were jeopardized when we started using those techniques because we didn't use the techniques that actually got us information to, to save American lives. Um, and it's hard to argue now that we shouldn't release it because it endangers American lives when before those who made the argument that this kind of torture is a problem for us in the world and endangers American lives, that argument was rejected by the same people who now say it doesn't endanger American lives. What are the ramifications of releasing this report on America's standing in the world? Well, I think that for a long time we've known this was coming. So I'm not sure there's going to be a new understanding of what we did. I think it's going to deepen, deepen people's uh, suspicion. Um, it's going to, the, the horror of the details are going to revive something that I think was that came out back in, in 2006. Even when we put it through the template of the fear that everybody here in this region was, uh, was gripped by after September 11th, could there have been another more successful approach? Sure, th th there were successful approaches. And in fact, some of the detainees like Abu Zubaydah, one of the first that was involved in this program, or the first, was initially interrogated by FBI agents and actually gave up the valuable information he gave up. He gave up to FBI agents using the standard uh, rapport building and psychological deception, those sorts of techniques, not torture. Does this report provide any avenue for reform? Um, only insofar as it, it further solidifies our, uh, the, the intuition and what people have been saying over the years that, that torture doesn't work and we can't, we can't use it. The only possible justification is that it generated good information. If it didn't do that, then it's not possible to justify it at all. And so the reform would come in a more strict adherence to the treaties we've already signed. John Sheeman, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for having me.